Welcome to the Northfield Podcast with Caleb Gordon. You can find out more about Caleb at www.calebgordon.com. Welcome to the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I've got my brother along with me tonight. I haven't done one of these in a while. Really, it's, wow. it's been a while. I'm excited you're with us this evening or today, whenever you're listening to it. How you been doing, Dave? Really well. Like really well. How's work? Awesome. Like awesome sauce, mm-hmm. or is it super stressful? It's just awesome. Mine's super stressful sometimes. So is it? It is, but that's good because God's good all the time, even when we are frustrated even when we're tired what's been going on you think anything exciting that's happened in your world not really <laughs> why not <laughs> just like it that way yeah you were sick for like how long ever forever like that's part of the reason we didn't do any of these podcasts because you've been sick for like i don't know i know a month like straight the flu yeah the flu and strep and good grief it's like good everything time. No, time. it was not a good time because oh, I hadn't yeah. seen you in like a, I didn't see you for like a month. Hmm. Like I think Sunday was the first time I saw you. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh. Um. So last time we we talked about putting one of these little homers together, we uh, <laughs> we wanted to uh, talk about the security or not the security how how we have false security in our salvation. People that think they're saved when they're really don't show any fruits and uh ray comfort says that uh like 80 or 90 percent of people that are church members that are sitting in the pew 80 to 90 percent of people that are sitting in a pew are falsely assured and uh they, they're not really saved what do you uh i mean i know you've been prepping on that and thinking on that for a little bit and uh off and on <laughs> He just gave Thanks. me this look. He just gave me this look. Those are obviously there's no video, so you just he gave me this look like I haven't prepped for anything, and I love that about my brother because he he's just we're gonna fly by the just seat of our it. pants. Just gonna just, wing it, are just we? Just wing part of this. That's, I prepped a little bit. That's good, but because I have not. And I, I just you know we'll just run with it. But it looks like you've got. I mean, you got notes. Don't even pretend like you're not. I mean, I'm looking at your note. That's, yeah. a, that's a ton of notes. Mm-hmm. That's a ton. Of, I, I have not that many notes. Yeah, you probably do. I not in my personage there. But I mean, what do you think about that? I mean, do you think that Ray Comfort's stats are right? Mm, probably. I, I, I would assume so because I was one of those. Well, you you like okay? Explain that. What do you mean you were one of those? I was thought that i was saved i've been in church my entire life so you're you know that's right you're a preacher's kid is it those of you who well don't i know? am your brother well you are and preacher's kids i don't know if you know my, our dad is a pastor so we are preacher's kids so it's just sort of kind of um we were here when the doors were open and so most of the part most of the time we still are too to this day yes so anyways uh grew up in church had a head knowledge of god thought i was saved did the went down front said the prayer at the time uh didn't mean zilch what do you mean it didn't mean zilch like explain. it was fire insurance you were worried about going to hell yeah i was really scared to go to hell okay didn't so is that is that hell. is that a is that a is that a good motivator to get you saved no why because it's the wrong motivation what should be your motivation to be saved the Holy Spirit and our sin. Holy Spirit should motivate us. And how does he... How does the Holy Spirit motivate us? Through recognition of our sin. And how horrible and damning it is to us. And we need to get rid of it. I, I read this verse. It's in Matthew chapter 7. <coughs> it's in chapter 7 verse 13. It says, Enter by the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many. For the gate that is narrow and 
the way is hard that leads to life for those uh, and, and those who find it are few. Um, that verse, when I read that, because and that actually ties into that same mini there in verse 13, uh, beginning or end of 13, beginning of 14, ties into verse 21 of Matthew 7. It says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. Verse 22 says, On that day, many, now that, that many right there is the same many that's in verse 13. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And verse 23 says, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work iniquity or lawlessness. Um, that verse really, I remember dad, I mean, dad's message on this really revolutionized my whole thought process because I was similar I had a similar uh, experience like you I grew up in the church went to camp did all the things I should do as a church kid but I wasn't saved why wasn't I saved because I had never truly recognized myself as wicked and sinful and deserving of God's wrath never did I, I just didn't want to go to hell because it's terrifying to think that of eternal fire Nobody wants that. Nobody, I mean, do you want that? No. I don't want that. Nobody wants that. So it, it was a selfish motive for me to <laughs> become saved. It was never, Jesus, I don't deserve your mercy, but God, I, I, I'm, I'm longing for your mercy. And I, 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 cause because of my sin, I deserve your wrath. But God, I'm asking for your grace. First John 1, 9, if we confess that sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us. I never really realized that, and that verse sort of kind of sealed it up for me. Uh -huh. uh, I don't, I don't know how that was for you, but one of the things I, I this week I've been listening in the mornings when I drive in. Um, I listen to John MacArthur in the mornings on Bot Radio Network. I listen to it on on Bot, and uh, it's a little plug for Bot Radio Network if you ever actually listen to this podcast. Um, but John MacArthur said. Um, People that claim to know Christ and never have joy in their life, or they just have, like, they have to muster up and try to have joy, but they just can't have it. I mean, you, you know people in the church that are like that, that just look really long in the mouth. They look like they've been sucking on a dill pickle. <coughs> I mean, that's, I mean. I love pickles. Pickles are good, but if you suck on a dill pickle for a while, you get a little pucker. I understand. You get a little pucker. And, um. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, the that was that was me. I, I thought I was saved, but I really wasn't. And it, the joy that really what I didn't really have the joy that I should. Christians should have joy because what's the fruit of the spirit? Love, joy, joy. So if we've got love and joy present constantly, it doesn't have to be mustered up. And you're, I mean, people that are quickly offended, quickly hold up grudges, quickly are just ready to fight on any topic. I mean, you just move the paper wrong. And they're ready to hold a grudge and get angry at you. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. I, I, that was that was me, and that was you. Yes, it was. Um, and I think we fit into that mold of the many for quite a few years. So I mean, had you and I been killed or died suddenly or somehow, hell would have been a harm. Yes, it would have. Even though we thought we were saved, which goes back to Ray Comfort's eighty to ninety percent are falsely birthed or falsely converted in you know they think they're in the kingdom but they're really not you look like you got something you want to say something no i you look like you're ready to jump okay so how is it that we can f know that we're saved then i mean what do we do we've, we've addressed the issue that there's false converts well how do we move in a direction that gives us hope that we are followers of Christ first I think you need to do a self examination of yourself <clears throat> isn't there a bible verse that says that it's in examine Corinth yourselves. Corinthians isn't it examine yourself to see whether you be in the faith I think it's 2 Corinthians 13 5 oh look at me I called it off the top it. of my head nailed it 13, 5, 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Examine yourselves to see whether you be in the faith. Test yourselves, or do you not realize that this that this about yourself, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless you indeed fail to meet the test. Man, I, I can't believe I 
recalled that. That's awesome. That you know is why, awesome. Great you, job. You know why that's awesome, though? Because the Holy Spirit put that information in my head. Did you read verse 6? Did I read verse 6? No. What's verse 6 say? But I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. Okay. Not approved. I hope that you will find out. Yeah, I hope that you will find out that we have not failed the test. So he's he's, yeah. say, he's, at, he's saying, hey, examine yourself. I'm hoping you don't fail this test, but there's a possibility that you may fail this mm -hmm. test. But I'm hoping you don't. Hope you don't. Hope you don't. But, but you, you better do a self-examination. But you better, exactly. You better check yourself before, <laughs> before, <laughs> before you, you wreck yourself, yourself. Check yourself, brother. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so I mean, I, I, I'm just at that point where I, I, I look at so many people who church hop and they, or did you know that national average, the, the, the average for the normal church going American quote unquote Christian is once a month. Hmm. They go to church once a month. That's, that's the national average for regular church going people once a month, once a month at that blows my mind that once a month is is if you did that with any other organization and they would oh they, you'd be kicked out of me they would boot you out of any i mean you name the organization if you were just if you showed up once a month and you were casual a casual member of a church <laughs> or a casual member of the, that organization it would be completely It'd be completely different, I and mean, you you wouldn't be a member of that organization. Mm -mm. And I, the other thing that I thought is is if we as church members, if, if we took our church members membership seriously, I mean that's another proof that I think that we we belong to Christ is we take the church seriously, we take the mission of the church seriously. You have to. Why do you have to? Because without the church. Uh, God uses the church as a as a body as one. You're a, like your body right here in front of you. It, if you're not active in a church, you're disabling the body. You're mm. not fully functioning a hundred percent. Like a, a for instance, say a track runner, if he's gonna go to a hundred yard dash, and the right foot calls in sick or whatever <laughs> and he's out there to win this race he's not going to win it right right yeah you got one foot to go off of maybe some hands and arms feet yeah. not feet <clears throat> yeah um i, I just it, it boggles my mind that people who claim to love and know christ ignore the one thing that christ came to the earth to die for I mean, you would think that if Christ died for it, Christians or people that call themselves Christians should be willing to invest their time, their money, their efforts, their everything in the local church. Because I need to, we need to preface that because everybody's, like, well, I'm a part of the invisible church. Well, okay, next time you need help, go to the invisible church for help. Yeah. You know, that's, that's my take on that. Mm -hmm. But I just, it boggles my mind that, that we, we invest all of our money, our time, and our effort in organizations that are not going to advance the kingdom. Not going to advance the kingdom. And we invest in things that are temporary. I mean, because I'm serious, and I've said this before, what we are doing in our churches, what we're doing here at our church, it's going to matter in 10,000 years. Mm -hmm. it, it really is going to matter in 10,000 years because it's eternal in nature. I mean, whereas... People say, well, you know, and I'm not <clears throat> knocking the rotary. I'm just using it as an example. I mean, like people invest so heavily like in the rotary. And the rotary is a good club. I'm not saying it's a bad club. But I'm simply going to say, well, they, they build wells and they do all the things. But guess what? The church does those things too. And we also offer the message of eternal water. The eternal well. The eternal well. That's where I was trying water. to think of my head. Water. water the, well. never you, You'll never thirst again. We offer that message which is so much better than just temporary physical water or physical healing or physical medicine temporary right now we offer through the gospel of christ all of these things that are so much farther reaching does, does that make sense uh -huh. and I, I just i don't know and it 
scares me a little bit for people that are sitting in the church pews who think that they're saved when there's a possibility that they might not be. Um, and they've been self-deceived. I mean, you and I both know people that are, you know, they are casually, some of them don't even, not even members of a church. They just sort of kind of roll in and come and go when they please. And if that church doesn't meet the quote-unquote need, they'll jump to another place that's quote-unquote meeting their needs. How many people have walked through our church doors and they say, well, I'm just not being spiritually fed, and so I'm going to go here. And they run to another place. Yeah, and they'll jump ship later on. Yeah, it doesn't take them very long. I mean, I know people that have jumped churches, and and it's funny how they always are like, you know, it, you know, it, it was so-and-so's fault I left that church. They were just so, oh, that, there's that pastor or that deacon or that pastor's wife. Or they always have an excuse as to it's somebody else's fault why they left the church. Mm-hmm. And they're always bitter and they're always angry and they're always pushy. And I'm like, hmm, common denominator here is you. It's always someone's done something to you, so you just have to leave boggles my mind yeah. I mean I look at me I think of people like John MacArthur who've been preaching at, at Grace Community for like 40 years how many times did he have I guarantee an argument with somebody or a disagreement with somebody in his church uh-huh. did he leave? No. no I think of people like Matt Chandler Matt Chandler's been at the village for like 10 12 years and I guarantee he's had but he's, he's committed for the long haul and that's the thing that just, I don't know, people need to make commitments to places for the long haul. Uh, because what we're doing here matters. I don't know. You got anything you want to close us out with? Yeah. Well, um, thank you all for joining us. Um, and, and man, uh, let me tell you, let me invite you. If, if you live close by here, um, you live in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, or close by Bartlesville, man, come and visit our church. Our church is Trinity Baptist Church. Um, it's here in Bartlesville. And uh, I'll put the Facebook link down below here so you can find it. Um, but, man, find a church that's Bible-believing, Jesus-loving, Jesus-fearing, people-loving, gospel-centered church. And get plugged in and use your resources. Go harder for your church than you do for any other organization. Because if you go hard for that organization, you invest and you push all your chips in on that or in the church, man, it's going to matter. And the reward is going to be eternal. So, love you guys. Thanks for listening. Go get them.